Anybody thankful to be in the house of the Lord to give Him praise? Worship with us.
place I'll cry out because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of kings, Jesus, Jesus, majesty, I can wait for eternity join the song they're already singing oh oh holy are you lord just to bow down just to bow down before your throne see your face i'll cry
well, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was, was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. If you know He is worthy, why don't we just take a few more moments and praise His holy name. Praise the one that saved us. Praise the one that delivered us. Praise the one that conquered death, hell, and the grave. Jesus, you are worthy of all praise, all glory, all honor. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. We can never give you enough, for you are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You can make your way back to your seat. We'd like to welcome all of our guests tonight, all of our guests in service and online. Why don't we give them a hand? Thank you for being with us, whether online or in person. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to worship with us. We do have a few announcements. Young people, say Unity Weekend. Say New Location. Early registration ends March 15th. That is this Friday. It's $125.00. And you have the option of splitting that into two payments. But once again, early registration ends this Friday. So if you've not signed up, please see Sister Ashley and she can make sure you're signed up with all the correct forms. Also, we have several fundraisers happening for Move the Mission and Save Our Children. Be sure to stop by the bake sale next Sunday morning in the foyer. If you can donate an item to the sale, please let Sister Jenny Wooten or Sarah Morgan know. There's also an Egg My Yard and a freeze-dried Skittle fundraiser happening. If you, can, you can find out more, informa- for, and more information by stopping by the information desk or at, by asking any of our youth staff or kids' church team. Um, if we can have our ushers, please. This past weekend, we had a few of our young people once again participating in the, Bob, the Biloxi Bible quizzing extravaganza this weekend. In our experience division, Mason Mulholland and Liz Nelson, they finished seventh place out of 24 teams all over. <laughs> from all over the Southeast. We actually had a family today visiting us from, te- uh, from Houston. They actually were in the Bible quizzing tournament yesterday. They wanted to visit our church this morning. Um, so we're thankful for all pouring in to learn the word of God. Mason had one first place ribbon and three second place ribbons. Liz had two first place ribbons and one second place ribbon. She also placed on the all tournament team. And then in the intermediate division, Brock McIntosh, Joel Nelson, and Casey Lindsay. Joel Nelson had a first pre- first place risen, ribbon. KC had a second place ribbon, and Brock had two second place ribbons. Why don't we give them a hand? And and remember, when you give to move the mission, you're giving to Bible quizzing. But let's go to the Lord and pray. If you have a need, why don't you signify that by the lifting of your hand? There are many needs in this place, in the, in the sanctuary tonight, those online. There are many needs on the screen behind me. So why don't we go to God in prayer, asking God to minister and move, asking God to bless the rest of the service. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your house, Lord, and to worship you. We thank you for this time together, God. We do not take it for granted when we're able to come together and worship you and be in your presence. And Lord, we ask you to meet every need, Lord. We ask you, God, to heal all those who are sick. God, set at liberty, God, those that are bound. Nothing is too hard for you. No mountain is too tall, no sin sickness is too great, God. No problem, God, is too hard for you. We know that you're able to do all things, God. We thank you. We ask you to bless this offering, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen.
your mercy never fails me. And all my days have been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God.
Jesus alone is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Why don't you offer up a hand clap of praise unto our God and give him thanks for he is good. He is good. In fact, the psalmist said it this way. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Everybody say he is good. If you would just taste and see, there's none like our God. He is good. I have found him, and I know that you have found him as well, to be good, to be faithful. What a great God we serve. How great it is to be in the house of the Lord once again tonight. What a powerful word we heard this morning. Thankful, bruised, but not broken. We're in the hand of the Master. And as far as I am concerned, as the Bible declares, no man can take you and pluck you out of his hand. No man can do that. We're thankful for what the Lord is doing. And young people, Bible quiz and keep that up. Great things are happening there. And what a testimony it is. And and want to encourage more of our young people to be involved in Bible quizzing. And I just want to throw this out there. I know we had our business meeting recently, but I want to uh, put a just a quick Uh, advertisement or or a plug-in for the coffee shop. You may think that's something insignificant, but the coffee shop is such a blessing. It's a great place for fellowship. But do you realize that last year, once again, we have been able to send 16 more thousand dollars to missions just from what we do in the coffee shop? Now that's, that's just a little part. But you get that coffee, and in my case, those cookies and my kids and the cookies and such, I feel like I'm a big part of that $16,000. But as a church, we were ranked number four in the United Pentecostal Church for total giving to every mission department, every department in the United Pentecostal Church, number four. Why don't we give God praise tonight and thank Him? Hallelujah. Praise God. It's great to be a part of a giving church, and I believe we are blessed in part because of that. And certainly it's good to have Sister uh, uh, Rogers with us and Brother Rogers, Brother Justin Rogers. He is the Florida District Administrator. He's been doing a great job in Ocala. He's been a blessing to Brother Boyd. And uh, Brother Rogers, we want you to come and deliver the word of the Lord to us, what God has placed upon your heart. We bless you tonight. Let's make Brother Rogers welcome in this place in Jesus' name. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord tonight? Can we lift up Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's thank him for his presence. Thank you, God, for what we feel here tonight. God, we give you praise in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Brother Strobel, and I give honor to you and, and your wife and Pastor Kinsey and Sister Kinsey. We give honor to you. Church, you are blessed with great leadership. Amen? Amen. Amen. We ought to give them a hand. And it was, I want to say thank you to my good friend, Brother Seth Levins, for greeting me at the door and showing me around when we came in and keeping a constant contact to make sure we knew where we were going. So he did such a great job honor him and, and his wife, Brittany, is good to be with them. And, and I see several friends out here tonight, people that we have known throughout the years, my wife and I. So it is good to see everybody. And it's good to have my wife here with me, Stephanie. She, she came with me this weekend. I'm sorry, give her a hand. All right. We are so thrilled and so honored to be here, and I want to give honor to you. I want to just tag in with what Brother Strobel said, and this church, you're consistently the top giver of the district, and I know that that is sacrifices that you all have made, and, you know, only eternity will tell what impact you have made, and you are impacting not only statewide, but nationwide and worldwide with your giving. So First Pentecostal Church 
from the district office. Thank you so much for your giving. I think you ought to give yourselves a hand. That's awesome, Brother Strobel. That's awesome. Well, I want to get into the word of the Lord tonight. Who's ready to help me preach? All right. If you will open your Bibles with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8, I'm going to be reading verses 2 through 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 2 through 4. And when you're there, say amen. 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 Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse number 2. The Bible says, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Verse number four says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. I want to draw emphasis tonight from verse number four, where the Bible says that where the word of a king is, there's power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And my thought tonight is this subject, the word of a king, the word of a king. Could you lift your hands with me? And let's just ask God to bless the remainder of this service. God, we give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for every song that has been sung. Thank you for these people that have made their way this Sunday night. God, thank you for the pastoral leadership and everything that you're doing at First Pentecostal Church. We ask that your hand would be on the remainder of this service. Bless this word. Let it enter our hearts and encourage us. Elevate our faith and let us leave here changed tonight. And we'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. An author was once quoted as saying, Words are the singular most powerful force available to humanity. Words have energy. Words have power. Words can help. They can heal, hurt, harm, or even humiliate and humble. Has anybody ever been humbled by a word? Words are powerful. Words can be even more impactful when we consider who it is that spoke the word. You'll recognize when there's a presidential address, all uh, scheduled programming is interrupted to hear the word. When a king speaks overseas, all scheduled programming is interrupted for a word. This is especially the case when we consider people in authority that speak a word. That's a powerful word. I came across an article that featured famous last words of kings, queens, rulers, and royalty. Now, some of these are very interesting, and I want to share some of these with you so that we can begin to understand that words are, in fact, powerful and important, and specifically, maybe, a last word. Alexander the Great, his last word was kratistos. Now, that was Latin for mightiest strongest or best. This was Alexander the Great's deathbed response when asked whom he would name as his successor. successor. That is, whoever is the mightiest. I imagine that that will be my response when they ask me who my successor will be. I will say, well, obviously, whoever is the most powerful and the mightiest, right? Now, Charlemagne, emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, he said, Lord, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Charles XII, king of Sweden, he said, do not be afraid. Those were his last words, simply, do not be afraid. Elizabeth I, queen of England, she said, all my possessions for a moment of time. Peter the Great, the Tsar of Russia, his last word was Anna. This was Peter the Great calling out his daughter's name before losing consciousness and eventually dying. Richard I, King of England, his final word was, Youth, I forgive thee. Loose his chains and give him 100 shillings. Mortally wounded by an archer's arrow during battle, Richard the Lionhearted nevertheless forgave the shooter and ordered his release before he died. Now, unfortunately... 
Richard's men failed to honor their fallen king's wish and executed the archer anyway after their sovereign's death. Unfortunate for that young man. Then there's this last one, and this is my personal favorite quote of all time. Marie Antoinette, Queen of France, and forgive me for my French here, but she said, pardonnez-moi, mon Dieu. Now, this was French for excuse me and forgive me, sir. The doomed queen apologized to her executioner after stepping on his foot on her way to the guillotine. So if you don't get anything else from this message, remember this. No matter how bad your day is, there's never an excuse to be rude. All right? Come on, somebody say there's power in words. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 declares that where the word of a king is, there is power. Now we understand in context that the words of earthly kings and authorities are powerful. But even greater than these, the words of the king of kings for your life and circumstances are infallible. That word, ladies and gentlemen, is without error. His word is the ultimate truth. His word is never failing. His word is always effective. His word for our life is healing, deliverance, and salvation. We understand that heaven and earth may pass away. Friends and family may abandon us. Life, situations, and circumstances may have us feeling like everything around us is falling apart. But when everyone and everything else fails in our life, the word of our king is forever settled in heaven. Who's thankful for that tonight? Come on, in a world that's shaky... In a world that is increasingly more dark and disappointing, I'm thankful tonight to know that God's word is forever settled. God's word for my life is always true. It will never fail. And I have his word tonight in my life. Are you thankful for that? Let's just give God some praise for his word. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Now, the day had finally come in 1 Kings chapter 8. It was a long ago promised and prophesied. And now the house that King David so longed to build for the Lord but could not build himself was finally a reality. After King Solomon spent about seven years building the temple, the house of God was now complete. King Solomon assembled all the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes It would be a grand ceremony. King Solomon intended for this to be a spectacular event. It was probably, if you can imagine with me, on the scale of the large productions of our modern Olympic Games opening ceremonies. Invitations for this opening ceremony were sent far and wide. All the best musicians and singers would be in place All their finest conference attire would be on display. The red carpet was rolled out, if you will. Nothing would be over the top for this event. No expense would be spared, and you did not want to miss it. You would mark your calendar and make every effort you could to be here for this special occasion. This would certainly be a day to remember This was the dedication of the temple of God. Now, 1 Kings 8 and 1 says that Solomon, he assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel, to King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. The production would be spectacular. King Solomon would strive for perfection in every aspect of the presentation. However, the temple would not be ready to operate until the Ark of the Covenant was set in the most holy place. The Ark of the Covenant, the chest with its gold-plated wood and topped with two large golden angels. This was a symbol of God's presence among his people. It was a visual reminder that the one true God had made a covenant with them. 
The mercy seat on the ark was a symbolic promise of the ultimate sacrifice that was yet to come for all sins. The blood of Jesus Christ that would be shed on the cross. The ark was the most important item in the temple. Somebody say it was important. Now, 1 Kings 8, 3, and 9 describes for us the process of bringing and placing the ark in the temple on this most spectacular and important day. The Bible says all the elders of Israel came and the priests took up the ark. Then they brought up the ark of the Lord, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. Also, King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with them were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. Then the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the temple, to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their two wings over the place of the ark, And the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary. But they could not be seen from the outside and they are there to this day. The Bible goes on to say nothing was in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses put there at Horeb. When the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. As those priests on this most spectacular and important day, as they carefully and methodically brought in the ark to bring it to the most holy place, the most important piece in the temple, as they walked into that sanctuary, very carefully bringing the ark, as they all watched in awe as the ark passed by them going to the most holy place. First Kings 8 and 9 points out that the ark at some point, had been robbed of its treasures. And within the ark were these contents. The golden pot of manna placed in the ark was a token of God's provision and remembrance of the manna in the wilderness, miraculously sent from heaven to feed God's people. This was no more. It had been taken at some point. It had been taken. Aaron's budding rod, a sign of God's power to protect his people, This at some point had been stolen from the sacred ark. It had been taken from its place. It was gone. First Kings 8 and 9 says nothing was in the ark except two tablets of stone, which Moses placed there at Horeb. The only thing left in the ark on this spectacular holy day, on this most important time as it was placed in the temple, the only thing left in the ark were two seemingly meaningless tablets of stone with writing on them. But there was more to this than met the eye. There was more to this than met the eye. These were the tablets of truth. This is what only remained. And when everything else had been pillaged and lost, when everything else had been stripped from the ark, God's word still remained. Amen. God's word was still there. God's word was still in the ark on this most spectacular and holy day. And I'm here to tell you that when everything else had been taken, when everything else was lost, God's word was enough. God's word was enough. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Kings 8, 10, and 11, It came to pass when the priests came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. As those priests carefully placed the ark, pulled out those staves and stepped away, a cloud of glory ushered into that place and filled the house. It was so powerful, the Bible says that no man could stand and minister. Because on this historic day, in that most sacred moment, when everything else had been taken, God's word, as we said, was enough. And his word, church, is always enough. His word is always enough for you and me in our lives. Because where the word of a king is, there's power. Where the word of a king is, there's power. 
And that's why there's power, First Pentecostal Church, in this place. Where the word of the king is proclaimed, there is power. This is the house, week after week, where the word of the king is proclaimed. You may have walked in here tonight feeling like life has you on shaky ground. And everything that once seemed secure is now falling apart. But the Bible says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled. It's settled in heaven. That's why God's word, the king's word, is our foundation. It's already settled and secured. Everything else may be falling apart. Your work life may be in turmoil. Your house may be in turmoil. Your family has gone crazy. The bank account is no longer secure. You, your health has gone haywire. It doesn't matter what anything else in life is going on. God's word is forever settled. His word is forever true. And his word is powerful in our lives tonight. Come on, when everything else has been stripped away, when everything else has been pillaged and lost, God's word is powerful. That's why it's our foundation. It's reliable. It's unchanging. It will never change. Come on, the, the things of this world change often. It's whimsical. You don't know what's going to happen the next day to the next day to the next day. But I'm thankful tonight to know that God's word is forever settled. God's word is always true. God's word is healing, it's deliverance. God's word is salvation for my life. Come on, this is what the world needs. This is what my school needs. This is what my family needs. This is what my community needs. Amen. I like the ark. You might be here tonight. You feel robbed. You feel pillaged. You feel like your joy is gone. You feel like your peace has been taken. The enemy of our soul, the Bible describes as a thief who would love nothing more than to steal from you, than to kill you and to destroy you. Your joy and peace has been robbed. Your faith barely hanging on. But in this place and in this house, church, we have the word of a king. And the Bible says that where the word of a king is, there is power. There's power. Now, if you're dealing tonight with loneliness, you're dealing with depression, then guess what? You need the word of a king. You need the word of a king. Psalm 34 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. If you're dealing with loneliness and depression, that's your word tonight. God has spoken to your life. God has spoken to you what you need. Have you lost your joy and your happiness at some point in your life? Psalm 30 and 11 says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Are you struggling with sin tonight? Can you seem to not get over that thing that has you down every week? You come to church, you seem to get the victory, but when Monday rolls around, you fight it again, you fall. John eight thirty six says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You shall be free indeed. Come on, if you come in contact with the King, he speaks into your life, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what the chain or the vices, you can be free indeed. Psalm now one nineteen eleven says, "Thy word, come on, say, somebody say thy word. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. If you hide the word of the King in your heart, you can be conqueror over sin. You can be a conqueror over sin tonight." Do you need salvation? Acts 2, 38 and 39 says, Peter said unto them, if you repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I'm thankful tonight for the word of a king. I'm thankful that his word has been hidden in my heart. I'm thankful that I've overcome sin. I'm thankful that God has healed my body, that he's touched my family, that he's turned me around and set me on a straight street. It's his word that did it. Come on, somebody, help me testify tonight if his word has meant something to you in your life. Amen. Praise God. Luke chapter 7. It tells of a certain centurion who had a very dear servant that was sick. The Bible says that when the centurion heard about Jesus, 
he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. The centurion had tried everything that he could. They, they had spent money on doctor's bills. They had gone to consultation after consultation. Nothing could heal this centurion's servant. And he clearly cared about this servant. It was like family to him. And he was going to do everything that he could to try to help this guy out. But he was near death. And this was a desperate situation. So the Bible says that the centurion heard Jesus was nearby. He was in town. So, so he sent some, some of his own uh, servants to him, the elders of the Jews, saying, I want you to he gather these guys together. He said, I've heard Jesus. I've heard these great stories and that he can heal and, and he has opened the blinded eyes and the deaf ears and the lame are walking. So I want you to go to him and see if he will come to my house and heal this friend of mine, heal this servant. So he said, I want you, to, want you to go see if you can interrupt his schedule and bring him here. So the Bible says when they approached Jesus and, and he heard their case, that he agreed to go. The Bible says when he was now not far from the house as Jesus was traveling to go to this centurion's house. The centurion sent friends again to him. He said, he's almost here, but I want you to go to him again. And I want you to say to him, Lord, trouble not thyself. Stop where you're at. Don't continue the journey. I'm not worthy that thou should enter under my roof. He said, wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. I know you're a busy man, and, and I'm not worthy to interrupt your day. But he said this. He said, but say in a word. Just say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. And the Bible says the centurion said, I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say to one, go, and, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this. And he doeth it. So the centurion understood something about authority. Has anybody got a boss at work? The boss tells you to do something. You ought to do it. You probably should do it. If not, you'll suffer the consequence. So the centurion soldier, he had, he had guys under him, and he understood how this worked. He said, if I send people, if I say, go do this thing, then they jump to it, and they go do it. And he said, I understand that in a similar sense, you're the same. Maybe not in a natural sense, but spiritually. Things that maybe I don't fully understand. When you say things, something happens. When you say blinded eyes be open, they just seem to open. When you say deaf ears be open, they just seem to unstop. When you say lame, take up your bed and walk, they seem to just take up their bed and walk. I don't fully understand it, but there seems to be something about when you speak. Something about when you say things things, powerful stuff begins to happen. And when he explained this, when he said, just say in a word, the Bible said when Jesus heard this, when he heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about. Jesus turned to the crowd that had gathered the people that had followed him this far. And he said to the people that followed, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And they that were sent returning to the house, the Bible says they found the servant who had been sick and he was whole, he was healed, and he was well. Amen. Simply at the word of the king. The desperate centurion understood this. Say the word. Say the word and my servant will be healed. Even when Jesus, you understand, was at a distance. He had not even made his way to the house. Even when he seemed so far away, simply saying the word was enough. If you're in here today and you feel at a distance, you feel like it's been a little bit since you've been in God's presence and you, you feel like I've been praying and I've just been kicking my foot against a wall and, and I don't seem to be where I used to be. I'm here to tell you and testify tonight that if you'll just receive God's word, if you'll just open your ears to hear what God's saying to you tonight, listen to the words of Jesus. You can be healed. You can be delivered. Your family can be turned around. All you've got to do is just look to Jesus tonight and say, just say in a word, just say in a word, just say in a word and thy will will be done. Amen. 
I'm getting ready to close tonight if our musicians want to come. No matter how far away you may feel, the word of a king, in his word, there's power. If you want to stand with me tonight. Now, I don't know if somebody in here is dealing with sickness in your body. But God's word says if you will come and the elders will lay hands on you and anoint you with oil, God will heal your body. If you need salvation in your life, if you'll repent of your sins, God's word says you'll lift your hands to him, repent of your sins, open your heart. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you need peace in your home, if you're in a troubled situation, the word of the king says he can turn that situation around no matter what it is. God's word is forever settled. God's word is forever true. When everything else has been stripped away and pillaged and lost. God's word is what we need tonight. Amen. If you feel that, I want you to lift your hands with me in this place. God, we thank you for your word. God, we're so thankful tonight for your spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you have spoken to us. Thank you, God, that you are doing a great and mighty work in us. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just feel like tonight somebody needs encouragement from the Lord. Come on, you've been, you've been feeling discouraged in your life and your prayer life has been affected. Your faith has been affected. Come on, God's word is for you right now in this moment. In Jesus' name. I just feel like somebody needs healing in their body. Come on, don't give up on God. Don't give up on praying that prayer. God's word says that you can be healed in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, your your family can be saved. Your family can be saved. Pray that prayer tonight in faith. God's word says it's true. God's word says it can happen. Yes, that's it. Come on, let the Lord speak. Let the Lord move in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word, God.
In the name of Jesus. There's power in this place. Why? Because there's a word of the King that's been declared. That's it. He said it'd give you authority. Walk in that authority right now in the name of Jesus. Tonight, you could be set free tonight in the name of Jesus. 